Hello car fans, and thank you for watching one more episode of Garage Time. My name's Tom. This week, we're gonna continue right where we left off and finish the bumperettes. I didn't have time to finish the welding and the rounding of the corners last week, so that is job number one. This week, it's more custom DIY Porsche parts. Stay tuned. Garage time. All right, I'm about to take these parts from last week. These are the CNC um, profiles of the bumperettes. There's, there's an inside and outside profile. And what I need to do is, rather than just weld this piece on top, like so, I want to create a curved edge. So if I was to weld this square, I wouldn't be able to get a very large radius on the corner. So what I'm about to do is take these beautiful precision machine parts and stick them in this thing I made on my vise to actually bend them by hand to create that profile along this edge. Might make you cringe to take a nice part and just you know tweak it and then I'll you know hammer it and then later I'm gonna zap it with a couple hundred amps. But you know that's kind of how, how I do it. Um, it's not the most conventional way, but uh, it's definitely a DIY way. Let me show you the tool I made. Okay, here's the um, custom tool I made sticking up here in my vise to make that little bend. So I've tried it out on the end of this piece and it gets me a, a pretty close bend. Now I don't need to bend all the 90 degrees. I need to bend about 45 degrees and I'm looking for approximately half inch radius. So the way I've done this is I've created this notch in this piece of steel. So you can see, if I hold my hand behind there, you can, you can see I just cut in to the right depth that I want the bend to start at. And then I, I radiused one side of this, of this piece of steel so that as I push the piece in and bend it over, it gets a radius. Now, originally I, I didn't know if this was gonna work because I thought when I, when I stick the piece in, I thought it would just slip out. But if I push enough pressure on it as I'm bending it down, it, uh, it creates the shape. And so you can see some tooling marks on the back. So it's not the most precise way to do this, but it's, uh, it's kind of quick and dirty. And this is gonna require a lot of you know, welding and hand finishing anyways. So I think this is gonna be okay for now. Here's a real quick progress report of how it's going. Um, I, I have it started here on this mild bend, uh, mild profile, and it's looking it's looking pretty good. You know, I don't need to go all the way around the corner. I just need to go a little bit and then have it peak in the middle where I can weld it and then file it smooth. And then on the back side, it's a sharper radius on the inside, and that kind of follows the shape of the, the die that I made. So you can see the, the marks in there. The marks are actually helpful so I know where I've been, so I can just keep, keep going at it. Now this piece is not as long as the previous piece I tested, so there's not as much leverage. So even with the gloves on, it's getting kind of tiresome to push with my hand. So I've been using this, this is a, just a rubber mallet, super old, um, beat up. I use it for all kinds of stuff, but it's uh, gentle on the aluminum, so it's only putting the pressure on the spot that needs to bend. And um, it's a little wobbly in the vise, this probably is way too tall, but it's working okay. The challenging part is gonna be to go around this sharper corner. I might need to make at least one relief cut, but, uh, but we'll see. So I'm just gonna keep going. All right, this went around the, the corner a little better than I expected. And it just is, it's not all the way around, but it's, it's about as far as I can do. The difficulty is it's, it's difficult to hit it with the hammer when there's nothing on the, the far side to hit it with. So I can only bend it so far. The rest will be done by hammer and dolly. Um, just to get that, this is the bottom of the bumper. I just gotta bend it a little bit more, 
hammer on dolly. So I'm going to look for a dolly that has about the same curvature as this. Um, I have one that's close. This one is, this one is pretty close and it has a little bit of a radius, but it, I need something just a little bit tighter. So I need to hunt around, maybe look for just a piece of steel and get that hammered around. Here it is, fully bent around. And you know, it, it does look pretty ugly and pretty messy, which I told you is a shame to just hammer on this CNC piece. But you know, this is just kind of the way it needs to be. It needs to get uglier before it can get better. So the only thing that I'm a little disappointed about is if you look at if you look at this shape, this is the CNC shape. So I lay it on top and the process of bending this corner um, around has sort of evened out the shape. So there was intentionally a gradual curve and then a little bit of a flat spot where it touches the bumper and then it comes around here. And in the process of bending, it's really just tended, it tends to just smooth all those features out. So this is something that will have to be put back in the part once it's all welded together, just in the polishing and kind of shaping phase. Otherwise, I'm pretty happy with the, with the outcome. This is, this is about the radius I want. I was gonna try to, I'm, I'm gonna have a, I have a radius gauge. I was, I'll, I'll check the radius and make sure it's about what I had put in the computer. But I think it's, I think it's pretty close. Okay, I have a, a radius gauge, and, and the one thing I did get lucky on is the radius is very close to half inch. So, so this is, you know, multiple half inch curves. So when I place it on here like so, I don't know if you can see that on camera, but it, it does follow the shape. So if I hold it from this side, it's probably a little bit tighter than half inch, but it's, it's not by much. It's pretty, it's pretty close. And you can tell that this is gonna only go halfway around the arc. Okay, I've shaped this piece as well with the, with the radiuses on there. And I have these two pieces done and taped in place. So this is the rough fit up with the curves. So if you can see, how easy is it is to see, but th this curve blends into one and then it'll get welded on the edges. So still some filing to do, still some um, shaping before welding, but this is the rough width and this is the position on the car. So obviously trimmed on top, shaped towards to, so it fits the deck lid. And then this is gonna get bent as it gets welded all the way around. That's the idea anyways. It's turned out to be a pretty complex piece. I'm getting ready to tack this plate onto the two side plates on the car. But before I do that, I need to think about the method that I'm going to attach these bumperettes to that rear license plate panel. And to do that, I'm going to cut up a, uh, this is a big aluminum block. I'm gonna tap a hole all the way through. I'll make two of them. And then I'm gonna weld this block on the back of this part here, which will be the um, kind of the face of the bumperette. So on the back of that will be a block for a, um, threaded stud to go on the back and then that'll extend into the license plate panel line and I can attach it that way. So I'm gonna cut that block right now. All right, so this block that's been tapped is now been welded to the outer portion of the bumperette. So you can see the welds along this edge and along this edge, and it's kind of in the shadow. Just a little fillet weld there. And then I've started to set up the welder for um, the aluminum welding on the edge. So I'm trying to get the right you know, penetration through there. This was a little bit uh, lower amps, a little contamination, not fully cleaned. 
but I, I think it should be close enough just to get this part on the car tacked in place. Now, getting it tacked in place is not entirely straightforward because, you know, it's not just a square bumperette. I gotta accommodate some angles so that things line up with the deck lid and it's a little bit trapezoidal. Plus I'm trying to make it a little bit narrower appearing from the back. So I'm doing um, most of the tacking on the car. Then I'll pull it off and, and do it, um, weld it all together for its final time. I have this very precariously taped in place and I have the angles matching up with the bumper and the angle relative to the license plate panel approximately where you want it. So I have this as flush with the deck lid and this piece which is about to be tacked in place is just hanging on with tape. So the challenge now is to get a couple tacks on this so then I can take it off the car and try to finish welding it without it moving too much. Um, it's going to be a little awkward and I'm not sure the tape is going to hold because we're going to put a lot of heat on this. Okay, so with all this tape and the way it's connected to the license plate panel, I cannot get a good ground on this. Um, so I have to reevaluate um, how to get this thing so the welder will work. Well, I got lucky. I was able to get a couple tacks. I got one there, one there, one on this side too. And so this is holding it in its, in its rough position. Um, there's still a big gap up here. This gap up here, you know, needs to be pushed in. So this is relatively flush with the deck lid as, as intended. And if you remembered from the uh, computer model from last week, this thing is a little bit twisted. So this is going to get hammered down so it's this gap here is going to close. Yeah, the tape's in the way, but you can see that there, there is a large gap right here that's going to get crushed down. Okay, I've taken it off the car just so I can get these uh, gaps tightened up a little bit. You can see up here on the upper left, this gap is opening wide, which is intentional because this curvature, this needs to curve in more to meet the uh, shape of the deck lid on the top. This side is the inside and it also needs to be uh, tightened up at the top. And then as we get around to the bottom, we have some very sharp um, edges to try to form this around. So the idea is to try to kind of weld and go and form and then check it on the car. This will take multiple um, attempts to get this to fit correctly, but it's now holding its shape. From the backside, I'm glad I put this block in first because it would have been difficult to access after these sides are on. There will be a cap that goes on the top to close out this uh, U-channel. This will be closed off completely. I've welded up to this section right about here and I'm having to start and stop a lot to get the radius of this outer piece to match the, the shape of the sides. So I'm gonna to continue to um, push this down as I go around this sharp corner. Although I'm, I'm probably gonna put some relief cuts in this so I don't just crush the part as I'm trying to bend it around. But uh, you can see the welds here aren't super pretty, but you know these are about as good as I can do anyways. Um, lots of starting and stopping, and it's just difficult um, when things don't fit perfectly. I mean, I'm having to manage the gap and weld at the same time but it's gonna be, it's gonna be fine. I've been constantly checking the fit of the parts relative to the car, just to make sure things aren't getting distorted and completely out of shape. But right now it's looking pretty close. This part here at the top needs to be trimmed, um, but I am getting the right sort of level on the deck lid and it's still fitting tight against the, uh, license plate panel. So this is still really hot. I'm st I just gotta let it cool down, take my time, but I constantly come back here and check it on the car for fit. Here's where I've gotten so far. 
you can see that the, I have the radius gauge here, and you can see the, the radius is pretty close to half an inch, um, right there and right there. This is still really hot. Um, one thing I could have done better, I don't know if you can see on camera, but there is a slight flat spot here, right where this weld is. And that is because on the back, I had welded that block on in, in this direction. It might have been better for me to either pre-bend this curve before I welded the block on or weld the block on 90 degrees so it's not creating that flat spot. Um, I can hammer it out a little bit with hammer and dolly, but I'm gonna have to really shape this with a sanding block, a uh, little more work than I needed to do. But when I do the other side, I think it'll go a little easier. Okay, I've welded from, this is the top. I've welded all the way around to where it just starts to make a real sharp curve. This is the bottom of the car. So I have added these three relief cuts just using a hacksaw blade. And I think that's gonna allow me to make this bend a little bit easier without um, distorting this too much as it's already um, pretty fragile being so thin aluminum. But you can see the welds on both sides. I'm back at the beach. I have my uh, kind of blob of aluminum. This was a nice CNC part, but now it's been, you know, hammered and welded and folded. Here's the first pass after the filing. And there are a couple low spots that I, I may have to fill with additional uh, welding. It's starting to look more and more like a, like a bumperette. Turns out there is a reason to bring sand to the beach. So I have worked it with some sandpaper now and there are still some, some defects in the weld area. So just a couple spots I'll probably touch up with, uh, with the welder, like here's one. This is just the edge of the weld, a little bit low. This material is pretty thick so I could keep sanding but I didn't want to go too far here at the beach. I don't have my radius gauge. So I wanted to see if this is still um, less than half inch radius, then I can probably sand it out. Here's the low spot. Probably need to use a power sander to kind of smooth out this section right here. And then here's the bottom shaping up okay. Here's another uh, crater due to the welding. Take care of that with the welder. A couple craters down here as well. And then this corner was just eroded away. So I'll have to build this up as well. You know, it's just going to be a long process of, of just polishing this. Right now, this is 80 grit. First day of summer at the beach. Okay, one thing I was worried about as I was doing so much welding was this profile here. So I remembered that I have, this is the material that the sides were cut out from. So it's a good gauge to put this part back in and, and look at how the profile is shaping up. So if I center it, in here. Here's my trusty radius gauge and as I go along I'm seeing that it's it's really close until we get to this point and this just tells me that there is more material that I can remove from the bumperette in these lower areas. Okay this bumperette is now attached to the car Kind of get a view for how it's lined up. And if you look down inside here, I don't know if you can tell, but there is the stud. And I did drill a hole in the license plate panel for that to attach. So there's a nut on the back side. Um, it covers up this tab where the license plate panel attaches. 
And I am just getting ready to do the final trim on the top so that it uh, matches the deck lid with the correct gap. So I'm gonna close the deck lid real quick and we'll look at that gap one more time. <clears throat> so you can tell it's a little bit uh, tight right here and we wanna probably go a little larger than this gap, which is I think usually like three or four millimeters. Um, this tail light's a little bit loose, it's fitting in here, can go a little tighter. But I wanna create, you know, a pretty large gap, maybe five, five millimeters um, across the top, and I need to weld the plate onto it. So that's gonna add some thickness too. So here's a quick view from the top. So if you remember from the earlier discussion, this portion follows the shape of the deck lid. And then this portion down here sort of follows the shape of this. So there is a twist in this part. Even though it's subtle, it is there, but a little hard to see. But I, I'm kind of happy with the way it turned out. I like the overall fit, and I like the, the size of this. I was able to get the cap welded on all the way around on the top, and uh, welding was a little easier because I wasn't having to manage, you know, the gaps the whole time. All right, I know this video is getting long and I really appreciate you watching the whole thing. This is, uh, this is complete. I mean, it's a complete Frankenstein bumper, right? So we have uh, original license plate panel, aftermarket uh, side bumpers, and now custom bumperettes. So it, it doesn't get any more um, Frankenstein than that, but I like it. I think it was worthwhile doing. There was a ton of work put into these bumperettes but I like the way they look, even though they aren't that dramatically different than the original. As you saw earlier, side by side, there is a big difference, at least compared to this fiberglass panel. So holding it up one more time, um, you know, th these extend much lower and they're just taller. So thank you again for watching and thank you for subscribing if you've already done so. If you haven't done so, please do so now. So you can be uh, alerted of new videos in the future and it also helps me and my channel reach more people so thank you again for your support and we will see you next week enjoy your weekend